Now that we've got our background created and our guides created, let's start working with tables. In my layers panel, I'm going to add a new layer. So I'm going to click on the new layer button. I'm going to double click on the new layer three and I'm going to call this table and then leave all the presets and click OK. I'm going to click on the eyeball for visibility for background to turn it off just so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to command plus or control plus to zoom in so I can see this lower third rectangle right here in the bottom of my poster. Now I want to create a rectangular frame in this area in the bottom of my poster. Hit your F key to go to your rectangular frame tool. And then once you have the crosshair of your cursor, in the upper left hand corner, align that vertices with the left and right axis and left click, hold and drag down a box all the way over to that right guide that we created and all the way down to the red line, which is your bottom margin. It should create a rectangular frame box that looks like this. Now I'm going to slide my document over to the left just a little bit and I want to duplicate this green box two times. I'm going to go back to my V key, which is going to take me back to my selection tool, V as in victory. And then I'm going to left click, hold my Alt key, which is the Alt key on a Windows or the Option key on a Mac. And then I'm going to slowly drag to the right and hold my Shift key a little bit. I'm just going to go a little bit beyond, slightly beyond where my guideline was set and then I'm going to let go and that's going to create my second box. And again, I'm going to left click and hold and hold that option key on a Mac or alt on a windows, hold shift again and drag just a little bit over and then let go. It's okay that these spaces are not equal right now. We're going to fix that in just a second. The reason for the three frame boxes, these are the areas where our schedule was going to go for our day, our date, our opponent and our time. When you make your schedule, depending on the number of games that you have, will determine the number of boxes that you need to fit all of those games inside of these areas of our lower part of our poster. Now I'm going to left click on our first frame, hold shift, click on our middle frame, while still holding shift, click on our far right frame so that all three frames that we just created at the bottom are selected. In my properties panel, where I want to go to is this area called a line. Now, if you don't see this huge box under a line, this dot, dot, dot might be hiding some of the areas inside of this align menu under properties. So if you hit those three dots, now you can see all this part that says distribute objects and distribute spacing. The one that we want to focus on here is distribute spacing. So if your box is not checked under use spacing, now make sure you're under distribute spacing, use spacing, not the one that is for distribute objects. Under distribute spacing, I'm gonna click on use spacing and I'm gonna put in the number dot five, six, two, five. You can use these up and down arrows to get to the correct number, which in our case is gonna be 0.5625. Once you have that number chosen, Make sure again that your checkbox is on and then you'll see these rectangular boxes above the word spacing. I want to use this vertical one that says distribute horizontal space with this arrow above it. I'm going to left click on that and now you'll see that the space between our frames down in the lower third is equal. I want to deselect all three of these rectangles. So I'm going to click down here in the gray so that all three are deselected. Click on just the first far left rectangular frame and then I'm going to hit command D to place inside of this frame. Inside of your sports schedule poster that we created, we also added this Excel file for our home schedule. So if you'll click that so it's selected and then click on open. Now some text will appear in this first box and it's not distributed across all of the frames yet. It's also not in a table yet. So those are our next steps. On any of the text inside this box, double click so it's highlighted and then hit Command A on a Mac or Control A on a Windows to select all of the text. Once all the text is selected and highlighted, you'll go up your top top menus and you'll find Table and then we want to choose Convert Text to Table. A Convert Text to Table box will pop up. We're going to leave the presets for Tab, Paragraph and Basic Table and click on OK. This will convert our text into four separate columns of a table. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, 
we've got this red box with a plus. What this means is we have additional information that we can't see within the size of the frame box we created. What I want to do is move what's left below here into our other boxes that we made. I'm going to zoom back out so you can see. What I need to do is go down to where that little plus is. I'm going to click back on my selection tool so you can see it now. That little red plus inside of that box. I'm going to click that and you see it will load my cursor with more information. I haven't clicked, I just moved my cursor around. Now I'm going to hover over our second frame box that we created and click and that will add the next information from our schedule. This too also has a plus with a square around it. I'm going to left click that. It's going to load my cursor again. I'm going to hover over the third rectangular frame to the right and click that. Notice that our plus is now gone, which means we have gotten all of our information from our text in our table and moved it across all three boxes. We want to create a header row for this day, date, opponent, and time. So that appears at the top of each one of our columns of our sections of our schedule. What you want to do is double click to go into your text tool and just left click and drag or right click and drag so that you cover that whole top row of information. Once you have that selected, we're going to go back to our top, top menus to table, and then we're going to come down to convert rows, and we're going to choose convert rows to header. Click that, and you'll now see that the day, date, opponent, and time carries over across the top of all three of our table sections. Now that we've got our table header across all of our sections, let's stylize the text for our poster. I'm going to unselect that top row just by clicking anywhere inside the word day over there so that I get a flashing cursor. To stylize things, we're going to go to our top, top menu. We're going to choose window, come down to styles, and then come over to paragraph styles. When the paragraph styles window pops up, in the bottom corner, you'll see the plus with the square to create a new style. Click that and you'll see paragraph style one. Double click on paragraph style one and we're going to change a few things here. First, for our style name, we're going to call it table. Then we're going to move to our basic character formats on the left. We're going to change our font family to Futura. And then I want to make sure for the type of Futura, I'm going to choose medium. I'm going to make my size 12 points, my leading 14.4 points, kerning at metrics, tracking at zero, case and positioning at normal. I'm going to go back to the information on the left-hand side and choose character color and I'm going to select paper to make this turn white. Once you've got all of those, click on OK. Now because my highlight of my cursor was in my first table cell, it may have applied that to that first textual information. Don't worry about that. We're going to continue formatting and we'll come back and fix that in just a little bit. Back over in my paragraph style window, I want to add another style. So I'm going to click to create another new style. You'll see paragraph style one pop up again. Double click on that. This time I'm going to label my style called table header. I'm going to go to my basic character formats again. We're going to use Futura again, but this time for my font style, I'm going to select bold. Leave your size at 12. Leave your letting at 14.4. Kerning metrics, tracking zero, position and case both at normal. And again, I'm going to check my character color, make sure it is still at white, and then click on OK. Now I'm going to style the information in my table. Still with my text tool selected on my toolbar, I'm going to come and move my mouse just over the top of my table. And you'll see as I move above my table very slowly, I'll get this black arrow. It's a down arrow for every column that I hover over pointing down. But if I go to the outside left, I've got an angled arrow. I want to get that angled arrow and then click. And what it will do is it will highlight my entire table. Now that we've got everything selected, before we format it, we want to go and turn our background back on. So I'm going to go back to my layers. Now, if you don't see your layers over here on the right, again, you can always go to your top, top menu and go to window and get your layers back. I'm going to turn the eyeball back on for visibility so that I can see my text in here. And again, you can see where it formatted that day because my cursor was in that box when we created our first paragraph style. Once we have our background turned back on, again, everything for background and guides is still locked. I'm going to go back to my paragraph styles with all of my text selected, and I'm going to click on table. 
and that's going to format everything in the table. Now, again, I only want the bold on the information up top and the non-bold on the information inside. So now I'm going to highlight that table row, go to my table header that we created, and click that one, and that will apply the bold. So remember, all of the information below our header is in a medium for Futura, whereas our header is in bold. And so the paragraph style allowed us to format all of those instead of having to do them as individual cells. Now I'm done with my paragraph style, so I can click the double arrow to close that down. And now I'll hit Command S to save our progress. The next thing you'll notice is that some of our elements come down to the second row, and some things are hyphenated because they don't fit completely within the spacing of our width of our column. So now we want to adjust our columns because also we've got a lot of extra space in between our day and our date. Here's how we adjust those. In our properties window towards the bottom, you should have your table dimensions. Again, if you don't see everything, you might just see the word table dimensions. Hit those three dots and it will expand so that you can see all of your table dimensions. This bottom one in our table dimensions, if you hover over it, will say column width. And that's how we're going to adjust all of these columns. Again, with some text selected, so I'm still in my type tool, I'm going to hover my mouse just above that first column on the left of that first frame that we made that says day. And then once I have that down arrow, I'm going to click. Notice that it highlighted all three of our sections for the day category. With that highlighted, I'm going to come back over here into my properties panel where these table dimensions are located. And I'm going to change this using these arrows. I'm going to come down to 0.75. And what that's going to do is shorten the amount of space between that first column of day and that second column of date. I want to continue to format the rest of these in the same manner. So I'm going to hover over the date section, move my mouse just above it till I get that down black arrow, and then left click. It will highlight that entire section. For this one, I'm going to change my column width to 1.3125. 3125. And again, it formats all of the date section. Let's continue this for opponent. Hover my mouse above the word opponent, get that down black arrow, left click to highlight everything. Come back into my table dimensions for my width. This one I'm going to change to 1.5. 1.5. Then I'm going to come to my time. Hover your mouse right above time, get that down black arrow, left click so it's highlighted. And I'm going to change time to one. Now let's just take a peek at what we have so far. So I'm going to go to my selection tool, my black arrow. I'm going to click that on my toolbar. I'm going to click down here in the gray area to deselect all of these items in our frames. And then I'm going to hit my W key to preview. So everything's looking pretty good in terms of spacing, in terms of formatting, but we've got this grid around these cell boxes around all of our elements. We want to get rid of those. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to hit my W key to go back into our editing area. Again, I'm going to choose my T. So I've got my text selected. I'm going to click anywhere inside of that table so I can get my down arrows. And again, I'm going to go to that left corner until I get that angled down pointing black arrow and click. That again will select our entire table. Once I have that selected, I'm going to go back to my top, top menus and go up to table. And then I'm going to come down to cell options. And then under cell options, I'm going to select strokes and fills. So table, cell options, strokes and fills, and click on that. With strokes and fills tab selected, I'm going to come to the weight and change that to zero. I'm going to come to the type and hit that drop down arrow and all the way down at the bottom is the one that says none. I'm going to click on none. Once weight is at zero and type is at none, click OK. And now that's going to get rid of all of these boxes in here. Again, if I go back to my selection tool on my toolbar, click down in my gray area outside here. When we're in this view of where we're working on everything, again, you see the guides, you see the margin, you see the bleed, you see all of these boxes. But when I hit my W key to preview, now you will see 
and we zoom out, that our schedule does not have those grid lines around it anymore. All right, our table is all complete. As I look at this, once we formatted everything, we do have a little extra space over here on the right. So if that's the case, we can slide things very easily. I'm just gonna left click on my first frame down at the bottom. I'm gonna hold shift, click my middle one, and then click my right one. And I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to kind of move over just a little bit to kind of space it. So I have roughly the same amount of space between the edge of the arm on the person on the left to the beginning of my table and from the right edge over here between the hand of my person and the edge of that ending table. Then click off of it and see. You just wanna kind of even that space up just a little bit. I may do it just a little bit more, just using my right arrow keys to nudge everything over just a little bit so that my spacing looks even before my table starts. Then I've got equal spacing that we created already between our sections and then sort of equal spacing over there on the right. Now that my table is complete, I'm going to lock my table and I'm going to save. And then I can close my table window. Thanks for watching. This completes video two. Click here to move on to the video three and we'll see you in the next video.